that little girl in eighth grade was bullied horribly by so many people. And all I did was transition from them bullying me to me bullying myself. Hi, beautiful. Come on in here because this is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my fabulous friends and I do all of the fun part of talking about living it, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Jay Williams and Aaron Cluley, three friends who are all in very <laughs> different stages of life, but we really appreciate having great friends around us who can just talk and share about the things that really matter. When we need a little extra help, we call it Miss Joyce, and we ask her because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriend. So you are one of us now. Come on in here, and let's talk it out together. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am really looking forward to today because I think we're going to have so much fun fun. And at the same time, it's going to be really deep and important. This is our beauty episode. Ooh. You're thinking deep and important. Hmm. <laughs> but we're going to talk about what beauty really means, as well as some of the fun, practical tips mm -hmm. that we have all um, grown to love in our own regimen. I, I can't even call mine a beauty regimen. It's just a survival regimen. <laughs> survival kit. <laughs> But anyway, that, that's our, our main point today is what is real beauty and what we can all do to um, live in it. And, and I am always amazed traveling around the world and meeting so many different amazing yeah. women. There is so much beauty in the world. Mm -hmm. And I just, I see these women and girls everywhere and I'm always struck by what God has put in them. Yeah. And the serious beauty and grace and it it's just it overwhelms me sometimes yeah and then when you talk to these women how they feel about themselves is often very different mm -hmm. you know most most of us don't see ourselves the way that yeah. we see someone else and especially not the way that god sees us yeah so we're gonna have fun with this but my first question is is it okay to talk about this you know yes. what i mean is it okay to talk about beauty or is that just vanity is it too superficial Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think it's important because whether we want to admit it or not, we all care about it. Mm -hmm. We do. And it's something that is in us as women to want to feel beautiful. And so if we're all feeling that, I think there's something to it. So the Bible talks about it. It mm -hmm. does. So I think it's I think it's super important because, too, when you talk about it, you can have healthy conversations about it. Yeah. Make sure you're in the right place. Not, yeah. Not too extreme one way or another. What are you going to say? No, I was just thinking, I agree with you 100%. I think it's valid to talk about, and it's necessary to talk about because yeah. almost everybody thinks about it. I, I'll say almost because I'm, I'm sure there's a small percentage of people that really don't think about it. But especially in today's society, yeah. you ha we have to. There's so much... Um, input from other sources, media, social media, oh, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, so much to live up there's to so much to live up yeah. to that, uh, you know, even with my daughter, like I, she, she scrolls, like yeah, she's scrolling, sure. whether it's through Pinterest or on, you know, on Instagram, Instagram yeah. you know, and, or looking at YouTube and, and there's a certain standard of mm -hmm. beauty that, that the world has put out there, that these conversations are necessary for believers to have in order for us to say, Hey, we know that this is something that you're thinking about. Right. Let's set some good parameters and practical things to like help you feel good about yourself as yeah. well. I think it's healthy, honestly. Yeah. I think it's I needed in, in, especially in this type of, you know, uh, uh, through this type of forum, like with with believing women that love Jesus, but um, can also set some good parameters because yeah. there are a lot of people that think it's a taboo topic. So, well, we have a friend who's going to join us, and she is one of those very very beautiful people, and she had a, a hard journey of her own, mm -hmm. learning what beauty really means and trying a lot of different things to yeah. be beautiful, and then discovering what beauty really is. So we're going to be talking to our friend Lori in a little bit. Um, she has a great story. She was a, a professional sports cheerleader. She did all sorts of things. And um, she is truly gorgeous inside mm -hmm. and out. But she learned a lot the hard way. So we're, we're going to learn from her too. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. Can I just be honest real fast as we start this too? No. Absolutely. Just to put this out there. Thank oh. you for your <laughs> Sorry, Jay said no. no. I'm no. going to do it anyways. <laughs> Thank you. This is a... She told you. Yeah. She did. Stop. 
That was my mom voice yeah. out with the finger and everything. <laughs> um, this topic is fun and I love to talk about it, but also it hits sort of like a, a sore spot for me right now. So I just want to say that up front. Like, I feel like I'm battling this as we speak anyways. And so for women listening, whether we have come to the point where we are confident in who we are and we feel good about ourselves, I feel like we're always going to be going through cycles where I think you're right. I get knocked a bit down and I have to build myself back up in the area of confidence or beauty and remind myself I am beautiful. And so I'm in a place where I'm sort of rebuilding that. And so I just want to be honest and throw that out there and say I'm really excited to talk about this with you guys because I think I need it too. Yeah. So I just want to tell my friends that. Well, thanks. And thanks. see, we look at Aaron and see such beauty. In fact, I, I look at both of you and it's just like, wow, you know, you are physically beautiful. You're internally beautiful. God has put so much beauty in both of you. And I think like you're saying, and like I felt, and I'm sure like you felt, mm-hmm. Jay, and that some of our friends who are with us right now have felt at times is that like, I don't belong in this company. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I think there are so many women who are listening right now who don't even know how to see themselves in the way that makes God smile, the way that He mm-hmm. sees them with such delight, because all they can see when they look in the mirror is all of the problems. Yeah. And we've all yep. been there. Mm-hmm. And so I really appreciate you sharing that. And um, I think this is going to be a breakthrough mm-hmm. for a lot of people as we continue to yeah. talk about it. I want our friends to know that as we're starting to talk about this, we don't have all of ours to figure out either. Oh my like, no. We're we're not, feeling <laughs> figuring out the same not thing. At all. <laughs> if they saw our, our our tech strand, they'd know that. Oh my like, we, we, <laughs> so true. We, we send the most awful pictures. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, exactly. It's so you know, that's really pretty. And I'm like, while we're saying this, like, we've learned. I, I believe in this group of friends just to be completely transparent with each other because sometimes the pictures, like, <laughs> sometimes the pictures that are posted of me don't look like how I think I look. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> so, I'm like, how did you pick that? Why did you pick that? And so a lot of things that my daughter always says, she's like, Mom, check your uh, check your tagged pictures. I'm like, why? She's like, because that's how people think you. <laughs> I'm like, no, honey. <laughs> and then I'm like, ooh, 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 confidence down the drain. There's one thing I love that dream <laughs> sound that went down. <laughs> that woo, like those those pictures that I have no say so in how they look. Yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. they keep us humble. Oh, so, uh, yeah, it's like, is that how y'all really think I look? Because that is not how I think I look. <laughs> Thank you so much. So yes, I am with you, Aaron. Those moments are reality real, checks, real and, life like, gut punches. Yep. Like, oh, okay, all right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. So this should help. Help me as well. And but we share those pictures in our girl in our group chat. We do. And I guess to help us, I guess it's kind of like tough love when it's the most probably unflattering photo. We make it each other's profile. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's maybe my favorite thing about you two. That when Jay texts me, I have the most unflattering photo of her pop up. <laughs> But, but you're still so beautiful sent, that I zoom in on like, can you believe this is what was put out there about me? And they're like, it's gorgeous. It's going to be my it. new profile pic. So yeah, great uh, friends. Great. So I I had a little beauty breakdown. <laughs> okay. Last week, and um, I I started cutting my own hair, <laughs> and just because it, it didn't look the way that I wanted it to, right? I was not happy with it. So I'm just like pulling it out and cutting. Cutting my hair, and I sent them pictures of like large chunks. Yeah. Just like <laughs> just cutting, just cutting pieces out of my hair, and then right after that, just a couple days later, found out that I had to do a photo shoot for a project <laughs> that I'm working on that we had no idea was coming up. And it's like, no. God, your timing is hilarious. I just hacked at my own hair. Um, Jay's not happy, you know, with some of the pictures that we use. Aaron's not feeling her best all the time, definitely. And we all have so much <laughs> that we can commiserate with each other on yep, yeah. and, and just say, wow, I'm so glad that you guys get it. You get my inside and my terrible outside both. No, terrible. Don't say that. Mm-mm. Because it's beautiful. When it is terrible. Well, it sometimes. Well, you, have, tell you, but- <laughs> you have seen the terrible. <laughs> Uh, wow. But Aaron, you said how the Bible talks about beauty, and it does. It, yeah. it talks about beauty and beautiful people in the, in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to do the best with what Absolutely. we have. 
And like you said, there's something natural in, in people. And I think that God has put in women mm -hmm. that we want to be beauty, but beautiful. But what we don't always understand is what beautiful is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want the airbrushed, yep. perfect look that we see in other places. Mm -hmm. That stuff is not real. <laughs> no. And I've learned so much over the years, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have too, about what real beauty is. Yeah. So let's start with that. Let's yeah. see. This is what Joyce has to say about the way God looks at beauty, and then we'll talk about it. Do you like yourself? Do you love yourself? Do you respect yourself? Because here's the bottom line. What you believe about yourself is much more important than what anybody else believes about you. Come on. What you believe about yourself is much more important than what anybody else believes about you. And if you know who you are in Christ, then you don't have to live as a people pleaser. Satan regularly attacks our worth and value. You know, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, the account is in Luke chapter four, two different times Satan said to him, well, if you are the son of God, well, if you are a child of God, then why do you have these problems? Well, if God loves you, then why hasn't he answered your prayers? He's always trying to attack our worth and our value and keep, get us thinking that God doesn't love us. And so we wanna talk for just a minute about how your self-image affects your future. Because adventure requires boldness and boldness requires confidence and confidence requires a healthy self-image. So how do you see yourself? So, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. How do we see ourselves? And when we look at what God's Word says about who we are and how, we see, how He sees us, it doesn't always soak in that easily. Mm -hmm. You know, we can hear God loves you. He cares about everything that you care about, but we can still look in a mirror or worse than that, look at a reflection of who we are in the inside in our, in our own mind and truly dislike what we see. So before we get to our friend Lori, just what are some things that you guys have dealt with, with your own self-image and, and the way that you see yourself inside and outside? Um, I know for like the physical side of things, because before um, I got married and before I had my, my daughter, um, I was a cheerleader. You know, I'm only 5'1". Um, and so I was a cheerleader, definitely very physically fit, active. Um, my wedding dress was a size zero. Like it was, a, I said, well, I said it was a zero one. So it was like a one. But I was like, and then all of a sudden I became a one zero. And then it just kept going up and up, you know, doo, 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 you know. And so as I got older, of course, the area that, of course, like the one that, the problem that I really had was my mid area, mm -hmm. you know, after I had my daughter, everything. Because I, I used to pride myself on having abs because like every summer I would work on that so I could look sure. right in my, my cheerleading uniform. But then after it got all mangled by having a kid, a kid yeah. you know, yeah. I just look all wrinkly, mm -hmm. you know, and then having to have a C-section too. That was the first area that like, that just really, I was just like, almost obsessed over mm -hmm. it and did not feel beautiful because of the the t-shirts I would wear mm -hmm. looked like I was still pregnant or you know and it was just like man and then it just kind of because I allowed myself to stay in that mindset that is what like that it just kind of it didn't change it begins to consume you doesn't <laughs> it, it yeah it consumed my mind it consumed my, and then I, I like I said the the weight got I got more weight, you know, packed on because I got into a state of almost depression because I was so sure. obsessed with the fact that I wasn't what I was, mm -hmm. that I wasn't okay with where I was at the moment. Yeah. And and that actually did more more detriment. So that's one of the things I always, I've, I've loved being short, just who I am. But then when, when my body shifted after I had Taylor and that's, she's almost, well, she's 17. So that's a long time ago that that, mm -hmm. that happened, but it was a mindset thing. And then after that, cause I'd never struggled with like self-esteem really. I was okay with my big old smile. I was okay with only being five foot one. I was fine with that stuff. But then when, when the weight thing happened, it was like, whoa, that was one of the things that made me physically 
you know, Mm -hmm. not happy. And then that ended up making me internally not happy because then I just doubted everything about who I thought God said I was and who he thought I was. I didn't realize Mm -hmm. that so much of who I was, I thought God thought of me that way mm-hmm. you know yeah. i thought god i, I don't know it was we, a we start to do that to ourselves don't we yeah, yeah. i'm was, looking yeah. at myself for so long in this way that surely god is disappointed with me too mm-hmm. somehow yeah yeah so it was it was a it was a hard season and i'm yeah. just now coming out of it mm-hmm. and honestly the season i'm in now with you know walking through a divorce like <laughs> this has helped pivot me into a new season of like, you know what? I will not use this season the same way I did before. Yeah. I won't allow this to make me look feel bad about who I am on the inside or the outside. Like, mm-hmm. no, I'm. I love who God says I am. So it's a different mindset this time around. Yeah, yeah, good. Which is interesting because, like, I can see that in you. I can. I I didn't know you then from what you went through before, but watching you now while it's so difficult like beauty is all over you and even though you're going through something so difficult like you know who you are in christ and so that it's amazing how it works but like it comes out in in who you are Mm -hmm. and you appear confident and you're just you're so beautiful and i think that's so amazing how it's the same with you like you know who you are in christ so not only are you just beautiful the way he made you but it exudes from who you are and things about you like shine brighter sounds so cheesy but you do you shine brighter when you know who you are in christ when mm. you know who god says you are yeah makes a difference it's true but it takes years to get there oh so long it, it, does. it does it takes years and it takes a lot of study and a lot of prayer and it really takes the holy spirit to yeah. teach you things because um i i remember everybody around me always being so pretty mm-hmm. you know like my mom and Grandma and different people, family members and friends, they're so pretty. Mm -hmm. And I was such a tomboy. I mean, I was just the epitome of, you know, falling off my bike and having scabs all over me (laughs) and, um, you know, dressing like a boy, basically, because I was such a tomboy. And so you start to see yourself differently. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to realize that I love that about me. It, those are things that God put in me because I love adventure and I love the outdoors. And, mm-hmm. and I don't, I, I would try to put those things aside and try to be girly, and it was ludicrous. I'm a terrible <laughs> girly girl. But if I instead concentrate on who God has made me, because yeah. it's all about joy. Mm-hmm. Joy is what makes us beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's you know? the word I was looking for joy. Yeah. It's a hard one. And yeah. I, th- I think there's something, and I can just see people listening right now who are thinking, ah, oh, you know, I don't see it in me. Mm-hmm. There's something so wonderful about not knowing how beautiful you are, and God uses that to make you more beautiful. Mm-hmm. It, what's beautiful about people is is not just the outside, yeah. but it's, it's God's love shining through them, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. And if we can focus there, but it's not always easy... It changes things so much. Yeah. And Aaron, I'm sure for you that you, we don't even see any flaws. You know, we don't even see any problems. <laughs> She's so sweet. <laughs> but Go I, ahead, keep going. I, keep going. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I know that everybody, when, like, when I look in a mirror, I see, I see tiny squinty eyes and a large nose and a tiny mouth and no chin, you know? So there are things. (laughs) Very specific. (laughs) There are things Uh that we can focus on. And Mm -hmm. if instead I don't do that and I don't say, this is the problem, and I focus instead on, God, what do you want me to do to make someone else feel beautiful? Mm -hmm. Because that is what makes Mm -hmm. us beautiful is Mm -hmm. when our focus is outside of ourselves. But anyway, I'm sure you've dealt with some of that too. Absolutely. I think growing up, like you said, I had kind of forgotten about this. I remember always feeling like the odd man out. I've always been freckly and went through a really bad makeup stage where nobody told me that my makeup was not the right shade for my skin. <laughs> oh, dear. Tom, it was terrible. Those are bad photos. Bad oh, photos. I'll send you all that one next time. New profile pic. New profile pic. Yes. <laughs> so my friends would always be the ones that had boyfriends and I would be invited on their date. Wow. You know, like chaperone their mm. day, which is always really good for the soul when you're the one who's the chaperone. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so those things happen early on. I think they sort of stick with you. Yeah. Um, so I've always kind of had to work on that. And then even as an adult, like 
after having kids, it's changed my body. I feel sometimes like I still look like a middle school girl. I'm thin, which I know I like, that's great. But like, do I look like a stick figure? Do I look like a boy? Am I not? Am I not as attractive as someone who is curvy enough? Curvy, exactly. If you're straight, you want to be curvy. If you're curvy, exactly. you want to be straight. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I give you some of my curves. Here. Yeah, I'll take some. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think that's a good point, though. We always want what somebody else has, mm-hmm. and yeah. so going back to the place, like, wait a second, I love my freckles now because it covers up stuff on my face. Like I if I get too. a pimple, you best. can't see them. <laughs> yeah, um, she's covered in pimples. Yeah, but you, you can't tell because of my freckles. <laughs> You learn to, to embrace what you've been given. Yes. Yeah. So when I learned how to use the right makeup, yeah. that helped. Mm-hmm. Things like that. But yeah, you kind of want what you don't have. Well, let's call our friend Lori. Yeah. Yes. Because Lori. Lori, like we said, is so beautiful inside and out. Mm-hmm. But it's been a journey for her. So let's give her a call and talk a little bit about this journey she's been on. Hi, Lori. <laughs> it's so nice to have you with us. Thanks for talking hey. it out with us. <laughs> Well, Hello. thanks for having me. It's wonderful to see your faces. It's Hello. good to see yours, We too. like seeing your face. <laughs> <laughs> this is our friend Lori Potter. And Lori, Lori is one of those people that just brings joy into every room that she comes into. Yeah, you do. And you do. And she just kind of exudes a natural beauty. Mm-hmm. But Lori, I know that it's been a journey, right, for you mm-hmm. to kind of be comfortable in that and and maybe even to see yourself that way? It still is, actually. I mean, I've come a long way, but yeah, yeah, it's been quite a journey. You were bullied, <laughs> right, when you were in school? Uh, yes, I uh, like middle school, not the greatest age group. I think what for is it girls. with girls in middle know. school? It's terrible. Maybe it's the, it's the worst. hormones. I don't know. It's and oh, your body's going it's through all sorts yeah. of, yeah. And you're just going yeah. through a bunch of insecurity yourself, probably, like in that phase. Yes, yeah. And so instead of dealing with it, you just project it onto others. Yeah, we just take it out on everybody mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It, 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 mean girls, is that's a real syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So but how did yeah, that impact uh, you? So, yeah, so I, it was like early eighth grade, I'd say. Um, it, it, I started getting bullied on a school bus, uh, but it started with one person, one, one girl, and then it eventually kind of spread to the whole school bus. And then Aww. after that, it spread to the whole school. So if you can imagine like, you know, a young girl getting bullied by maybe 100 people day in, day out, month after month, what that left me with was this idea that there must be something terribly wrong with me Mm -hmm. because otherwise, why would so many people hate me? Right. Mm -hmm. I was on this dance team and it was the summer before my freshman year in high school. And there was a group, a group photo was taken and I saw that group photo and I hated myself so much that I scribbled an X across my face. Mm. And that kind of shows you the impact of how badly self-hatred took root after I'd gone through what I went through in eighth grade. Yeah. So it was such a major transformation from what I had looked like in high school to what I ended up looking like after high school that it was almost unrecognizable. Mm. There was a time that a friend said to you something that that was, um, I guess, eye-opening for you. Like, is there anything left real about you? Exactly. So one of the things I did to try to give myself worth and value was I entered pageants because, you know, overachiever. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, and if you get a sash and a crown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So I thought, you know, it was the Miss Sacramento pageant. I won third runner up and I thought it would be funny to try to trick my friend Andrea into thinking that I'd won. So I had the sash on and I had this great big bouquet of roses and I was glammed out and I had on my ball gown and everything. And I showed up at her door, knocked on the door. She answered the door, took one look at me and she started laughing. And I'm like, what is wrong? And she goes, is there anything real about you anymore? Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was kind of an eye opening thing. Yeah, I'll bet. At that point. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was more offended though than I really realized that, Mm -hmm. you know, there's something wrong with wanting to change yourself that severely that people are telling you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I remember, I remember something similar to that in high school when you're talking about this, that just really triggered me to think about some of the things that I even did in high school. Um, I was one of the only black people in my class Mm -hmm. and I look back at some of my photos and I realized that I had gotten blonde braids Hmm. 
because I wanted it to be long, my hair to be longer. Mm-hmm. My hair was already long, but it was coarser, of course, and, and curlier. And sure. it took a long time to straighten. But I remember getting blonde braids and contacts were really popular. And I got blue contacts. And it, this was subconscious. <laughs> oh, I, didn't wow. even, I didn't even realize yeah. that I had done it. Yeah. But until I look back now and I'm like, wow, like, you know. I, I can I can attest to that. I, yeah. I remember being in high school. This was probably my sophomore year. I did that probably my sophomore and junior year. Mm-hmm. I had because I wanted to fit in and I wanted to look like everyone else. So I, I know what that could potentially feel like. You know, yeah. just to to reinvent yourself to maybe even look like what you think beauty is. So right. yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, we couldn't just accept ourselves the way we we were. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you ended ended up being essentially the epitome of what people want to be as beautiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were a professional cheerleader for the NBA. You were visually, I, I'm sure what many people would look at and say, hey, she has arrived. But how did you feel internally as you went through that time? Very, very insecure. I, I felt very insecure during that whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, to, uh, through most of my young adulthood, I, I would say I was very insecure. It, when I after I got married, I felt a little more secure because my husband loved me unconditionally. It was like the first unconditional love that I'd really experienced in my life. So, and then God, of course, you know, once I started walking with the Lord, <laughs> then yeah. He started teaching me about His unconditional love. But it took a very long time. Um, you know, I think once, once I got to be about 30 years old, um, one of the other things I did to alter myself was get breast implants. And I had those for about 20 years and I started having, uh, you know, some health problems, but by then for you know, the last 10 years I had them, I, I didn't like them because it, it, it didn't do anything for me. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it didn't make me feel more whole or it didn't do what you thought it would do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I went ahead and, you know, had those removed last fall. And you were having health problems because of the implants, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I found a lot of inflammation issues over the the last 10 years that I had them and it kind of crept up, but yeah. So now I'm still going through the healing process of that physically. Just to be real honest here, I've always wanted to do that. And so I, I don't have a, I don't, I think there's things that you can do to our bodies that isn't like against the Bible. And I think I was okay with the idea of it, but after talking to Lori and just maybe God working on my heart, I had to, I kept coming back to what is your motive, Aaron? Like, right. why do you want to do that? I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it, but at the same time, like, why do I feel the need to change what the way that God made me? And so after talking to Lori about that, and then just knowing your health issues and the risks, and yeah, yeah mm-hmm. all of that, I just it kind of opened my eyes and it made me take a step back and think like, what, what's my motive? And I need to check my heart on that one. Hmm. I'm so glad because you're, you're gorgeous the way you are and you don't need to add anything to it. Lori, what, what was the turning point or was it more of a process where you began to understand a different concept of true beauty? I think it was after I started walking with the Lord. Um, I was kind of a prodigal. It was maybe 2005 when I came back to Christ and learning about how he sees me and how, who I am in Christ, the love that he has for me is unconditional and how he designed me is the way I'm supposed to be. And so that, that's, it's kind of a long healing process where you you gotta learn, you gotta unlearn certain habits and behaviors and learn how God wants us to see ourselves well, if there's if there's one encouragement you could give women as as um, we tell you by, what would you say to them when they're not feeling sufficient in who they are? How would you encourage them? I would encourage them first by saying that when you're rejecting your what, what you are doing is rejecting yourself. The process of you know not liking the way certain parts of you or however you're put together, not liking yourself, it's actually a form of bullying. It's Mm self-bullying. And that's something that I've had come into a realization and realize that that little girl in eighth grade was bullied horribly by so many people. And all I did was transition from them bullying me to me bullying myself. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of an eye-opening moment where I had to just start to learn to love that child and Mm. kind of go through my life and learn to, you know, get to the point where I can totally 
uh, accept who I am and the way I am today. That's such a fascinating way to look it at is. it because it really is, you're right, it's rejecting yourself, but it's also rejecting God. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. saying, God, you should have done this differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that's a big way to hurt that. ourselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. When she said that, I just have this picture of all of these women, all of our girlfriends who are watching this, who are feel that exact same way, Lori. Like we have the little girl inside of us who were bullied or hurt as little kids or even mm-hmm. as adults, and we've never let God heal her. So we have to yeah. be okay going back. So for all of our friends who are listening, let, let's let let God go back there. Let's let mm-hmm. him heal that little girl inside of us and be the beautiful woman he's called us to be. Lori, Absolutely. thank you so much. We're, we're so glad you were with us talking it out together. We love you. Well, I love you all too. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. And I appreciate every one of you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, let's jump right back into the word because yeah. what Lori was talking about is so, so good. good for all of us right now. And accepting ourselves and seeing our full beauty is so important. And it's not natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not what the world teaches us. Mm-hmm. So let's hear more from Joyce about that specifically and what God's word says about who we are and how to make it happen. It's so easy to look okay on the outside. I always say we can dress it up and take it to church. But that doesn't mean that the real me went to church or even paid any attention while I was there or got anything out of it or even intend to do anything with what I heard when I leave. That's a good time to clap. Mark 7, verse 6 says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Mark 7, 14, they, you know, in the early New Testament, so many people had lived under the Jewish legalism, and one of the things that was an issue for them all the time was what they ate, what they touched, and washing their hands before they ate. And so now Jesus is trying to get the message across to them that it's not the things on the outside, it's not what we touch or what we eat that defiles us, it's what's in our heart that defiles us. And so in Mark 7, 14, he said, nothing outside a person can defile them by getting into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. Isn't that true? When you Mm -hmm. think about some people that you know who were really attractive when you met them, Mm -hmm. but after you got to know them a little bit, (laughs) Mm -hmm. they did not look so good. You know what I mean? It's because of the things that are coming out of us Mm -hmm. that defile us. And if the things that are coming out of us are different, if if they are the love of God and the fruit of His Spirit, then it does impact what we look like yeah. on the outside. It's true. Yeah, that goes back to what Aaron was talking about, that joy and that light inside of you, like being the thing that's so beautiful. Yeah. And and that is the truth. Yeah. You know, because I know the word, talk about like what's, what's in you will come out, like, mm-hmm. you know, out of the, abund- of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. And yeah. so when your heart is corrupt or dark or mean yeah. you are not gonna look good Isn't, it mm-hmm. makes you look it does i've seen some of the most beautiful like physically beautiful people you know like in that i look and like wow and then they open their mouths and it's like Ooh. Yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> so it's like you know it can just make it oh, really yeah. can detour and so i really try you know even now you know like i really try to let the joy of the lord be you, I, I have a resting face that just kind of is like this <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that. So I don't see anything wrong. She looks well, kind of look angry, angry at you. And okay. I, I get so, I, <laughs> okay. Like, that's one thing <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed about like you know like quarantine and things like that. Like I've been wearing a mask, and so it's not like <laughs> the older gentleman that's a gas station. I look better than I've yeah, ever looked. Yeah, like, Smile, baby girl. You know. And so now with the mask, I don't oh, have to worry yeah. about it. But I have been intentionally because I do like. There's been such a transformation inside of me, mm-hmm. you know, over this past year. Yeah. I truly want the joy of the Lord to like shine through me. So I'm like trying to like. 
smile yeah. more. Yeah. You know, intentionally because you your know, eyes smile. So you can tell in a mask if you're smiling. Smiles and yeah, smile. Exactly. Or look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my smile still sound like a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> uh, well, we, we do have a, a free Bible study. It's a resource, but it's a free Bible study mm-hmm. that's online that is so perfect for this. We want to tell you about it. It's 14 weeks to boost your confidence. It's an online study that you can do that that will really help you. And we have all these little beauty tips that we were going to talk about and show, and we're, we're running out of time because we have so many important things to talk about. So I'm going to ask everybody to pick one thing, and then maybe <gasps> we'll do some others as a bonus. But <laughs> Pick pick the one thing that you think. Okay, pick more if you want. I, I'm not gonna. It's so hard. <laughs> I love it all. Okay, I'll go first. I'll go. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. So, so for me, my hair is like it has a life completely outside of mm-hmm. mine. It's just <laughs> it it. I have a lot of hair and it grows really fast and it grows straight down over my face <laughs> like like a llama. And so. <laughs> Anything that I can find to help with that. So I have certain things, and and this is one like, okay, use a silk. Heard about that. Use a silk pillowcase. Now, my mom did it, my grandma did it, and I did too because it doesn't make my hair so crazy, and it's also really good for your skin. Yeah. So that's the one I threw out. I love oils too for your hair and for your face. It just makes a big difference. Oh, that's so good. So that's a good one. It's a couple quick ones. Okay. I got um, I brought my, my my mascara, oh, and mascara, I just buy I grocery you. store brand mascara <laughs> because I've tried a few, but I just love a good mascara. Me too. Because if you have some good eyelashes going on, then it just helps brighten everything up. It's true. It's, eyelashes are like underwear. You just don't go out without it. Wow. It's really true. <laughs> or you do. One day. <laughs> no, that's a horrible outlook on life, but anyway. That's a different kind of story. <laughs> that's, that's some therapy that I'll need yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah. Um, I'll start nail polish because I love having my nails painted. So even just a fresh little coat of paint makes me feel feminine, makes me feel like I am ready to go out and conquer the world yeah 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 okay well i brought a box i brought a box jay has a box but i i mean what's in the box jay i don't know i don't unveil it well i don't i don't know which one i should unveil should i go for the big one or should i go for the smaller (laughs) i'm so save one for later (laughs) okay well this one is just because i think it's very very practical Uh and very cheap um (laughs) and so i get this from my I get this from my um, local beauty supply. Now, keep in mind, this is not Sally's, okay? Now, this isn't Sally's. This is something like, it has to, typically it has a royal name, like kings or queens, you know? It has to have, like these types of beauty supplies, which if you've never been, you two have to take you on a field trip. You have clothing in there. There you go. It's everything in there, okay? Everything you've ever needed and everything's really, really cheap. So I do have some really, like, I have some pretty expensive makeup too, but this little thingy. So what is it? It is a powder, it's a mineral powder and it's a really it's a darker color i don't even think it's made for what i use it for but i love it mm-hmm. because it i make a contour out of it so even if i don't wear foundation because my skin is pretty dry already like sometimes i don't have to wear a lot of like foundation but i use this and i make like cheekbone you have lovely cheekbones you do mm-hmm. i've noticed and 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 it might not even be like i like how i look so i i like yeah. this this makes me feel is pretty. that not the key anyway yeah yep. like yeah. i don't care that it's called what is it it's just a random rk who knows what that is i don't know but it was three dollars <laughs> and i love it so that's great thank you because when we feel good mm-hmm. to, i think that's one of the biggest things is don't think so much about trends that you do something that you don't feel right in. Right. Feel good in your own skin. Feel good about yourself. And I think that there are so many things that come from the inside out. Mm-hmm. You know, um, forgiveness. Don't be holding grudges. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have already talked about the joy in our life. But, but those different things that really do change from the inside out it's like drinking water right Mm -hmm. you drink a lot of water it changes your skin it makes you more healthy it's the same way drinking in the word of god yeah Mm -hmm. it comes out and it does the same thing and it changes who you are and it changes the way people see you and the way you see yourself i i brought my hat because it i i love hats but i someone told me they didn't like it what yeah i know but I, so I thought, well, then maybe I'll never wear this hat. This it's person? fine. Yeah, I have no, no but, fashion. Right. But <laughs> to me, I put it on and I said, no, Aaron, you like this hat. Yeah. So when I wear it, it's, it's cute. But it's more symbolic to me. Like, 
I feel cute and I'm wearing this for myself and because I feel good, not because of what anybody else thinks. So to me, <laughs> wearing the hat is an act of That's like good. claiming who I am. Good for you. Christ. I know. And it's a cute yeah, hat. And it's a cute hat. Plus it looks good. Yeah, yeah. and I look great in it. So <laughs> I think you, you should put it on. It would look really you cute should, with that outfit. Can we Seriously. finish the, the podcast with my hat on? We should. Nice. It's a total Even win. if you think it's so ugly, I love it so much. No, I don't think and it's And it reminds ugly. me that the brim is flipped up a little. There we go. Oh, oh. Mm. Too much? Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh, you cute. <laughs> All right, carry on. I'm just going to sit over here in my hat. <laughs> I, I just think there's so much uh, that God wants to tell us about real beauty. And I think of different people in my life who maybe haven't always been the most classic beauties like you know Mm -hmm. symmetry and perfection of their features but they are some of the most beautiful people that i can think of because of what god has taught me through them or the way that they loved me or um different things just about who they are and how they loved other people and so i'm thinking about so many of you who are listening right now and who Mm -hmm. are watching and just don't see those good things in yourself I know, I know without a doubt that there is physical beauty Mm -hmm. in each one of you. Absolutely. But most importantly is that internal, the humility, the Mm -hmm. kindness, the gentleness, the the things that God has put in you. If if we can all focus on those things and let those things pour out, you're going to be looking so good and people are going to be drawn to you. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's who we're meant to be. We're we're meant to draw people to you because of Christ in you, Mm -hmm. not because of the wrong things, Mm -hmm. not because of what they think they can get from you or because you look a certain way. Draw people to the Christ in you Mm -hmm. and it changes everything. 100%. 100%. And mm-hmm. the thing about it is we are made in His image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the things that helped me. And so for anyone that's watching or or listening right now, just know that you are made in His image. Yeah. And yeah. so I started Perfectly. saying that. Perfectly in His image. So this mug, this face here, this looks like Him. And and that's something that made me say, like, you know what? I don't want to insult him even. Yeah. So I started just declaring that I am beautiful. Mm-hmm. I am, you know, I look like my daddy, you know? And mm-hmm. I just had to keep saying that until it started really taking taking root. And also one other thing that I want to just encourage everybody to do is start doing little things that to love yourself. Mm-hmm. Like oh, yeah. self-love is very, very important. Whether that's skipping out on that cookie or, you know, taking a little walk. I went on my first hike the other day. And so Yay. I just do, yeah. <laughs> so I just just every day that I choose to do something for me, because we as women have oftentimes do a lot to love everyone else and we forget about ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you'll start feeling better about yourself. Not saying become vain or selfish, but right. every day do a little something for yourself because like that matters. And, and once does. you do that, then you'll start seeing that, you know, and, and finding value in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I have one other suggestion. I think this is hugely important. Hang out with beautiful people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about physically beautiful people. I'm talking about people who you are drawn to because of the mm-hmm. beauty of Christ in them. Yeah. When you hang out, and here's some examples right here. Mm-hmm. When you hang out with beautiful people, it rubs off on you. It does. So the, true. the Jesus in them mm-hmm. splashes over onto you. And you know that's why I love being with so many people that God has put in my life um, because it rubs off. And so find the people around you. Don't choose your people because of the wrong factors. Choose your people because they are beautiful in Christ and and it'll rub off on you too. Mm -hmm. 100%. That's good. Well, thank you all so much. And I I really do want to hear more beauty tips. So maybe we'll do some behind the scenes stuff and hear a few. I've got got more in that box. Yeah, I need to know what's in there. It's good stuff. (laughs) So... Be watching for that. It's going to be fun. In fact, probably the way that you'll need to see that is to sign up for our friends' email list. That's how you get a lot of special, fun, behind-the-scenes stuff. That's when you know about our new episodes coming out. And please subscribe also wherever you like to listen to your podcast or watch your podcasts. Mm -hmm. And uh, please just uh, talk it out with us as often as you'd like to because we love being around you. You're one of those beautiful people that rub off on us, too. (laughs) Thank you all. No, thank you. And you are looking extra spectacular Especially today. with that hat yeah. on over there. No, no kidding. 
Wow. That would be my new signature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tip of the hat. Yeah. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.